North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin have exchanged another set of letters to mark the 75th anniversary of bilateral relations between both the countries. And this comes a month after Kim made a rare trip to Russia, where Kim wished Putin victory over imperialists and anti-Russia scheme. Well, to talk more on this, we have with us Dr. Robert Edwin Kelly. He's a political analyst on Intercore Affairs and is joining us live from Pusan. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us in Beyond, Dr. Kelly. Hi. Hi, thank you for having me. Right. Now, Dr. Kelly, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un exchanged letters with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. How do you assess growing relations between both the countries amid the changing geopolitical world order that we are seeing in today's time? Yeah, I think the Russians and the North Koreans share a basic opposition to American hegemony or American sort of dominance, at least in um, in Western affairs. And they, they oppose this. They want to see the sort of the U.S.-led order in, in East Asia and Europe overturned. And so they share that commonality of interest. I'm not sure that the North Koreans and the Russians actually share much more than that. I wouldn't say that the alliance or the relationship they have is affective or emotional or in any way sort of genuinely committed. I think it really is basically transactional. I think it's understood at this point, for example, that the Russians don't have the defense industrial base capacity to meet their needs for artillery shells in the war in Ukraine. You know, modern warfare is very ammunition intensive, and so now they're buying them from the North Koreans. And so the language that you mentioned, right, I would argue that's probably, I mean, I don't know, but it, it sounds a lot like it's sort of like ideological covering on top of what is a fairly traditional transactional relationship. They share a common opponent and they have shared economic interests. Right, Dr. Kelly. Now, in the letter, Kim sounded extremely satisfied with the discussions that took place during Kim's visit to Russia just three weeks ago. And uh, Kim has also pledged to develop relations to new heights. Can you shed some light on the word new heights here? What does he exactly mean? Yeah, so I think, the, I think what the Russians are getting, I think that's pretty well established at this point, right? The Russians are getting ammunition, particularly artillery shells, but probably also bullets and some other things from the North Koreans, right? North Korea has a defense industrial base for competition with South Korea, and mm. they have a great deal of stuff sitting in warehouses, and they're selling it. The real question, and what Kim is probably referencing, is what the North Koreans are getting back from the Russians. And there's been a lot of sort of debate out there among analysts, right? Like, what exactly are the Russians going to give back for the North Koreans, right? Are they going to give them money? Are they going to give them oil? I mean, what are they going to give them? You know, North Korea needs a great deal of stuff, but we, we assume, right, again, the analyst community, what we think is that what the North Koreans really want are, uh, is Russian uh, military technology, particularly satellite technology and missile technology and sub-technology. These are all things that North Korea really wants for its nuclear missiles, and it doesn't really have the internal technological base to develop. And so I think we're kind of assuming that uh, the North Koreans have, you know, the Russians in a tight spot. Russia really needs this assistance. And so the, this is like a unique opportunity for the North Koreans to uh, get, uh, uh, you know, a major a major gift here from the Russians, right, to get the Russians, give them something the Russians normally wouldn't give away. And so that's like, you know, space technology, for example. Right, Dr. Kelly. I was just coming to the point that you made there, that uh, the growing relations between both the countries has clearly stoked tensions that a revived Moscow-Pyongyang axis could easily bolster Russia's military in Ukraine and provide Kim with missile technology right. banned under U UN resolutions. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I mean, this is actually sort of an important point. Your last point there about the UN is actually an important one, which is that technically the Russians, legally the Russians are not allowed to do this, right? You know, Russia sits on the UN Security Council, has a permanent veto, but the Russians did actually vote for the sanction regime around North Korea. There have been, I believe, nine sanctions votes at the UN Security Council level since 2006 on North Korea. All of those votes were unanimous. That means that both Russia and China voted for them. I mean, there is a kind of broad concern out there, not just from the Americans, but also from China and Russia and India, too, right, about the North Korean nuclear weapons program. North Korea is a very opaque place. It's a very scary place. People worry a lot about North Korea with nuclear weapons. And so there's been this sort of concern, even among American opponents, that North Korea's program not develop too far, that it not get, you know, too far out into, uh, you know, expansive technologies like, for example, satellites and and, and submarines. And so now, you know, the Russians, I think they're so desperate because of the war that they're sort of breaking on this sanctions regime. But it's a pretty big deal because the Russians are, you know, they're a P5 member. They're supposed to support the sanctions regime, and they're not, right? I mean, they're about to sell, you know, SLBM technology to the North Koreans, which is a, a massive violation. That means basically the sanctions regime around North Korea is falling apart. Absolutely, Dr. Kelly. We'll, of course, be uh, clear, uh, closely monitoring the close relations between both the countries. But thanks very much for taking our time and joining us here on Beyond with your insights.
Thank you for having me today. Thanks.